This video is going to cover uniform motion. Now, uniform motion might seem fairly simple, but one of the special things about it, it's the first real model that we're going to meet. And so there's going to be some things that I talk about that are specifically relevant to modeling and simplification. These ideas are something you will want to use later in the class as well, but uniform motion is the first place we really need to use them. So this comes into both representation in terms of how do you represent motion of objects that satisfy uniform motion. You've hopefully already watched or read about motion diagrams, which is one way to do it. We're also going to be looking at plotting in this video. The second aspect is about problem solving. One of the first steps of problem solving is making your visual representation, but that goes hand in hand with deciding what models you can use and what simplifications you can use. So this is really an important part of problem solving in that if you apply uniform motion as your model to a situation that it's not appropriate to do so, at that point there's nothing you can do for the rest of the problem that will possibly get you to an appropriate result. So to briefly talk about what uniform motion is, it is when an object is traveling at a constant speed in the same direction. So another way to express the same idea is that you have a constant velocity. And so if we look at these two cars here, the top car, car A, it appears to be traveling to the right. These are, of course, motion diagrams. And we see that it covers the same distance in each time interval. That means that it must be covering the same, it must be going the same speed in order for it to go the same distance each time. And we see car B appears to be traveling to the left. It covers a different distance. However, it still appears to cover the same distance in each time interval. This idea has been covered in videos previous to this, but remember that on this motion diagram, we can draw these displacement vectors and that we can directly translate that into an average velocity vector based on the idea of dividing our displacement by the time interval that makes up uh, the time between these two images. So whenever we're talking about uniform motion, we're assuming that this average velocity vector that we're drawing every time is not changing. So if you have a situation where you can clearly see that your object is not covering the same distance in every time interval, it would not be appropriate to apply uniform motion as a model in that situation. I want to discuss a few situations that are examples of when we might choose to use uniform motion. So one example is a person running. Now there's a subtlety here that's actually going to apply for all of these situations is that if I'm describing to you a person running and in your mind you're imagining them starting from rest, starting running, therefore speeding up, then running at a constant speed and eventually slowing down, that wouldn't be uniform motion. That if I want to talk about a person running and I'm applying uniform motion, I must be talking about the period of time after they have started from rest. So this is really important to think about, is that in physics problems, you will frequently be have, uh, given a description of a situation, and it's very important that you don't add things to that situation that you haven't been told about. So if, for instance, I'm telling you that a person is running at five meters per second, you shouldn't assume that they're starting from rest. I haven't told you that. We're only talking about the part of their running where they're running at a constant five meters per second. Now again, we might be thinking about this as a person running in a straight line. Now again, if you're a runner or you're thinking about watching someone run, you might imagine them bouncing up and down a little bit as they run. So part of our simplification here is that we're not thinking about that motion. We're attempting to simplify them down, to think about them as effectively a point particle. So we don't need to worry about the motion of their arms. We're just worried about how, in general, their body is moving at a constant five meters per second. If you need to worry about the details of how they're speeding up or slowing down or how their body is bouncing up or down, you can't use uniform motion then. Now, if you're in a problem where you have to think about those things, that's fine. You must choose a different model. But in the case where the problem has described to you in a very simple way, do not add complications. So a second and perhaps more adorable version of the same idea is a dog on a skateboard. If the skateboard is moving in a straight line at a constant speed, that's a great example of uniform motion. 
But of course, somehow the dog started moving, and eventually, probably, the dog will stop moving. You can't use uniform motion if you need to think about the beginning or the end of the motion. Similarly, you might imagine that maybe the dog's wobbling back and forth a little bit. Maybe there are some bumps in the road. Maybe the skateboard isn't going quite in a straight line. But if none of those things are the point of the problem, it's appropriate to simplify it to uniform motion. Finally, another common example where we will apply uniform motion are talking about cars on roads. So if you're thinking about driving in downtown Decatur, where you're starting and stopping all of the time, that's not a great example. So instead, we might think about an expressway being perhaps off on I-20 somewhere in the middle of the state, rather than on I-75-85 downtown, where you're also starting and stopping. However, as long as you can talk about the car traveling more or less in a straight line at approximately a constant speed, that's a great time to use uniform motion. If you're thinking about a car starting from rest and accelerating, that by definition is not uniform motion. So whenever motion is described to you, the first thing you must do is carefully read the statement, carefully understand what's going on, and decide what simplifications can be made. And again, it's really important that you don't add details to the problem that haven't been described.